number Isaiah sees, the wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. Rejoicing. What an awesome way to begin our week, right? To begin our day and actually begin our week. So, another of the plethora of places that Linnell and I lived was Reno, Nevada. Anybody been to Reno? Yeah. They got this strip down there, right? You know, it's not as glitzy as what Las Vegas is, but they got a strip just the same. They got all kinds of casinos, bright lights and other stuff. And then you're greeted with this arch. It's not 630 feet high, like the Gateway Arch. But it reads this way. The biggest little city in the world. Not sure about that, but. The city was built around the Truckee River. That's actually what made them establish it there. And it's at the base of the High Sierra foothills. Once that whole area was nothing but a wilderness. The home we purchased actually is the first home that Linnell saw. Normally I'd be at work and she'd be looking at homes and she went to the real estate agent and said, this is the house we want, the first house. She said, no, you got to look at other ones. She says, no, I don't. I just want to look at this one. In this house, the backyard was very, very steep. It was fenced, but there was no grass back there. It was just kind of brushy stuff that had kind of grown up. Now, looking to the west side of the subdivision, it was dry and lifeless wilderness. had not yet been developed. That was back in the 80s. My guess is now that's probably all developed as well, too. But it was amazing that almost overnight in the springtime, the wilderness would come alive and explode in color with flowers everywhere. They'd last about two to three weeks, and then it would go, kind of go back to wilderness. When I was reading the Old Testament lesson for today, that's exactly what I pictured in the beauty of the words of Isaiah. The wilderness suddenly bursting with color. Isaiah writing seven centuries before the birth of Christ, God gives him a vision. Now, this is a wide awake thing. That's what a vision is. He's wide awake, and he sees this vision about the future return of the remnant of Israel, bringing them home to their homeland. It would be like creation bursting forth in bloom and in joy, a time to rejoice. But there's a problem. The people ignore him because... They're ignoring some of the, they're enjoying some of the best years in their lives right now, the people of Israel, Israel are in Judah. They're at the peak of power, prosperity, and actually territorial expansion. Only the reigns of David and Solomon are any greater than what they're living under now. And they had everything. Yes, that's 700 B.C. and not 2022 A.D. Because we have everything as well. So why would they listen to Isaiah about a time in their future, a time of exile in the hands of their neighbors, really good friends, Assyria? Isaiah is blabbering that all the people will lose everything. They're going to lose their homes. They're going to lose their nation, their temple, their very society if they don't change their ways. Everything that they saw today in that time would be decimated. Nobody wanted to hear that, just like nobody now wants to hear that we're going to have a recession, right? And we just kind of put it off. That's not going to happen. But here comes Isaiah, talking about, the eyes of the blind shall be open, the ears of the deaf unstop, the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. Come on, Isaiah. You're either completely out of your mind or just out of touch with reality. Or, Isaiah may know something that they do not know. I'm not sure Isaiah did, but God certainly did. Today begins week three of our four-week Advent journey. It is Gaudet Sunday. In Latin, that is rejoice. So why in a... You know, when you look at the Advent, you guys have been looking at Advent candles for the longest time, probably. 
And there's always a pink one. It's always like kind of weird. And it's like, it's always the third Sunday. It's not like the fourth Sunday or anything, but it's always the third Sunday. Well, it's done that way for us to take time. To take time, look around, kind of slow down. Take a breather. Savor the moment. And it gives us a time to prepare in anticipation for the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the manger. That's when God's reign is upon us. And yet, outside of our time here this morning, when we know God's reign is prevalent, admit it, most days you may not feel like God's reign is really there. It's not breaking through or the joy is not just kind of bubbling up within us. We see a lot of things, and I'm going to name two of them in this past week. This last week, we learned that our elected representatives passed the Respect for Marriage Act, which is anything but a respect for marriage. And it is not the way God intended marriage. There's no mistaking what God has said. He says, a man shall leave his father and mother and be united with his wife. In addition, I read an article about it was speaking toward the increasing persecution of Christians. Persecution because of our adherence to God and God's word. So those two things kind of put a little damper on my week. So I had to kind of stop and think to myself, how can I still live in the joy of the resurrection of Jesus after we leave here this day and know that tomorrow we're going to be facing these same things again? But today is the Sunday of rejoicing. So let me ask you this. How far can you drive your car looking at the backup camera? In other words, looking back. <laughs> or maybe if you don't have a backup camera, one of our vehicles doesn't, you know, you kind of do the old over-the-shoulder thing. How far can you go that way? You probably typically don't go very far, do you? Your vision and perspective are greatly limited, right? You have no peripheral vision when you're looking at a screen, whether it's here or here, and it's like, oh. Looking back through a mini screen like that, even if you have a bigger one, you have limited vision. And when we do something like that, we are limiting ourselves to what God is doing through the windshield, I would call it, of every day. For the whole world. God continues to bring people to Him. No matter what they say, God continues to bring people to Him. He continues to keep the world in His mercy and in His grace. God continues to keep you and me in His eternal care. Granted, taking the focus off the nation or the world's decisions doesn't mean that they don't exist, which of course they do. But it does mean that we can experience joy even when the world kicks Christianity in the teeth. And that's what I think happened this last week. The church can rejoice because God's got this. Never forget that. God's got this. God didn't have to read that in the newspaper or online at Google. He knew that that was happening. We may not have control, but God does. And God will right the wrong done against him and his people. Notice how Isaiah, too, is never looking backward. God teaches him to always look forward. Always look forward, even in hardship. And what are they looking forward to? The gladness of the wilderness and a rejoicing desert. God leads us to see rivers bursting forth in a desert. What sounds like Isaiah maybe being a little out of touch is simply what the world looks like from God's view. God's view sees more than one fulfillment in the reading we have this morning from Isaiah. God gives Isaiah a vision that's far beyond returning of the remnant of exiles back after their captivity. 
God gives Isaiah a vision of joy, looking even further to the coming of God in the flesh. To walk and talk with his people. To fellowship with them. He points us to the arrival of Christ. He points us to the Jesus' miracles and Jesus' redeeming death and resurrection. But in the advent of our king, there is even a greater fulfillment to come. You can even look farther out. We are expectantly waiting for the return of Jesus Christ when he will gather all the redeemed unto himself and he will restore all of creation. What does that look like to me? I see the beauty of the Lord waiting for us with wide open arms in heaven. He's awaiting the return of those whom he has already redeemed. He's already redeemed you. The Lord is waiting for you. The Lord is waiting for me and for all who trust in the name of Jesus. Now we have the whole picture of Isaiah. Paints a picture of Christ's kingdom waiting for us, the redeemed to enter. From Isaiah. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy. And sorrow and sighing will flee away. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Shall come to thee, O Israel. Rejoicing, all God's people said, Amen. Amen.